Give a My card. name is Eric Beer, and I'm the director of the Center for Layered Polymeric Systems, which is a, an NSF-sponsored science and technology center here at Case Western Reserve University. I was always interested in structural property relationships in polymeric materials. And uh, that's my main focus in my career. And I used the knowledge in that field, the polymer field, on which the Department of Macromolecular Science is based here at Case. And I used that knowledge to work on these very complicated living systems. Biomimicry means learning from nature and then taking features uh, and uh, developing uh, synthetic uh, models or synthetic material systems that have some of those features in them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do, the, the latter. Mm -hmm. And if you want to call that biomimicry, <laughs> I'm happy. I like to uh, call it lessons from nature. And then what we take the lessons from nature and we try to copy some of the features uh, from those lessons using synthetic materials. Uh, I think that's what is meant by biomimicry. It's, it's attempts to copy features from lessons from nature's from nature. Um, I always distinguish between a bioreplication and biomimicry. Bioreplication to me means an exact replica or a nearly exact replica of what happens in nature. I look at nature and uh, see its structure, see its property or function spectrum, mm -hmm. and then I try to take features out of that and reproduce it synthetically when I see a application that is a, it's usually a very advanced application mm -hmm. and the octopus eye that you are so interested in today is an, is an example of that. I got involved in 1968 in this area in studying the structural property relationships of tendon And uh, we wrote a number of very defining papers uh, in that area. We take the tendon out, mm -hmm. we study its hierarchical structure, mm -hmm. which is very complex. And then we try to learn from that mm -hmm. what we can do synthetically okay. to, uh, to produce the elements of a synthetic tendon. So I always was working on structural property relationships in, in mammalian soft tissue. Mm -hmm. Now your question was, how did I get become interested in octopus uh, uh, eyes? Well, in the middle um, 90s, or early 90s, we stopped doing lessons from nature. Mm -hmm. Or I stopped doing lessons from nature. And we uh, proceeded along the lines of microlayering, which uh, have enormous promise that's evidenced by the Center for Layer Polymeric Systems. We were quite a ways along in creating the octopus lens. I became interested through the Department of Defense in the octopus lens. Um, we worked closely with the Navy Research Lab. A group was funded by the DARPA, which is the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA to create advanced lenses. And they picked on several groups to work in this area. And we were fortunate enough to be chosen. This is before the uh, major center was coming by NSF. Okay. And uh, in that period of time, over several years, we uh, inch by inch, step by step, took our layer of technology and uh, com learned from nature. You see, this is an outstanding example of learning from nature. Uh, because it was published uh, what approximately the octopus eye was, is, uh, we started to try to copy it. 
Now, there's certain things about ours that are better than the octopus eye. For example, yeah, the octopus eye, you, well, cannot take it about 40 degrees C. You damage it badly. Collagen damages badly of right at 40, 42 degrees C. Yeah, you know, that's high fever in a, in a, in a human. Right. And uh, we can't take much before about 42. Mm -hmm. And so that's true with, with any connective tissue. And so our lenses are thermally stable above that temperature. And another advantage over the natural system in, in the synthetic uh, lens, the synthetic octopus lens in quotes, um, Another advantage uh, has to do with the fact that we can build lenses that have in them different refractive index gradients that are far more intriguing and complex than the design in the octopus lens, which is actually a linear gradient and not very complex gradient. We have gradients that are far more complicated. So we have major advantages, higher thermal stability, and also, um, of course, uh, uh, much greater flexibility in the, in the gradient, and also in the shape, because we can make any shape you want like, and uh, an animal is limited to the system in which the lens is, uh, is uh, contained. So that tells you the story of the evolution of the lessons from nature because I, I just brought back the, my interest in the lessons from nature mm -hmm. to, uh, to see whether we can uh, use our micro layering to copy. It's an unusual example, but not very common, those examples. The ultimate purpose is advanced cameras. And uh, we believe we can produce lenses and are producing lenses that are uh, unique in their characteristics because we have a way of putting a refractive index gradient into the lenses not only like the octopus eye but ones that do not occur in nature that use this principle mm -hmm. the principle of optics the layer thickness that we use, the, lay the thickness of the layers, is vitally important to the optics. So that's the rule of scaling. The second rule is the rule of interaction, that the layers have in some way to communicate with each other. They have to stick together. They have to have certain advantageous properties when they come together. And the third rule is the rule of architecture. And that has to do with the, as you mentioned earlier, the design. Because once you have the layers and the scales and the sticking together, the second rule, the rule of adhesion or the rule of interaction, you then have to decide on what you're going to design with it. And we designed, or we had the architecture of a, of a fish eye lens, an octopus mm -hmm. lens. Yeah. And it, I think it's or better, the, the octopus is a magic word, but I think we're dealing with fish islands as, in general. Okay. All right. All right. right now in my class, we've been taking uh, a look at uh, other lens applications, such as uh, uh, cornea, not just the lens in the eye, and, uh, and also contact lenses. Mm -hmm. We've just been thinking about it. Okay. Uh, we are not at this point yet in the able or have uh, worried much about implants or biomedical uses. We're definitely interested in looking into it. This process of uh, making these lenses uh, has been patented here at the university. Right. Uh, we have a, an international patent on them. I want to be remembered uh, uh, as a diligent workman, as Lawrence Olivier said once in an interview. He did. Uh, uh, Barbara, I remember a Barbara Walters interview uh, on, Walter, uh, on uh, Lawrence Olivia. I don't remember it exactly, but I think she asked him, how do you want to be remembered? 
and he rolled his eyes. He was a wonderful <laughs> actor. And he said, Barbara, I want to be remembered as a diligent workman. And of course I laughed. <laughs> I thought he was one more than a diligent workman.